Hey folks, thanks for tuning in. It's always a great honour that you would choose to click on this video. Life is so short and you do need to count your blessings. And because it's 2020, it's more important than ever to count your blessings because you never know when you're going to get attacked by a politician on Twitter. So that is what today's story is about. You're probably not going to be too surprised to hear that because obviously I am referring to Scotland. Um, we all know what's going on in Scotland at the moment, but yes, apparently being targeted by an elected official is basically just an occupational hazard now of conducting your innocent private business in the beautiful country of Scotland. So here we've got another story, an incident, let's say, which will lead to absolutely no negative consequences for the elected official in question who used the power of their office to attack an innocent person on ideological grounds by the looks of things. But of course that is politics for you. You certainly wouldn't expect any negative consequences for a politician, would you? So let me give you a wee bit of background information and I'll word it carefully so I don't get arrested. But take a look at this photograph. That is a beautiful photograph of a little bit of the universe. It's taken from the surface of our planet from a point located in a place called Caithness in Scotland. A place called Holkirk. Beautiful little place. And the area is called Caithness. And it's a beautiful place anyway, without the ridiculous beauty of the Northern Lights. And obviously this photographer decided to take a photograph of which he was evidently quite proud. It's a beautiful image of Scotland and he shared it with his 8,000 followers on Twitter. The photographer is called Ollie Taylor and as I say he's got about 8,000 followers, so a nice little chunk. But it's not like he's a, a massively famous guy or anything, or even famous at all. I'd never heard of him until this, so... That's a positive little bit of PR for him in that regard. And every follower he has is well deserved if he's capturing images like this. And I do love a bit of good quality photography. So as you can see here, he does seem like a very nice and chilled and happy guy. And also quite humble. In his tweet here he says, Keith Ness, last night's little Aurora display here in the north of Scotland. Been away from Twitter for a little while. Hope everyone is all good. Smiley face. What a nice, happy guy he is, and talented as well. Well, stupid him, because he forgot that while he takes photographs and enjoys his hobby and then posts the, the photographs on Twitter, members of the Scottish government are also stalking Twitter. And they're keeping an eye out for things that they can complain about, by the looks of things. The politicians who are supposedly running the country during arguably a time which one could suggest may need some leadership to be shown and you would be forgiven for presuming that the politicians might actually be working hard at the moment, stepping up to the task and making the people proud, but that doesn't appear to be what's happening. I suspect with politicians I always get an image of them all sitting around an enormous table just feasting on turkey legs and laughing about how they all go at the same parties. But between feasts, this guy Ian Blackford, who is an extremely powerful man in Scotland, as if that actually means anything, to be honest, but a, a very powerful man in Scotland, he sees this photograph, this beautiful photograph of his country of birth, pops up on his phone, presumably, in his Twitter feed. Then he somehow figures out that the photographer is an Englishman. I can just imagine Ian Blackford seeing the photograph of Scotland that this guy posted, Realising that the name Ollie isn't particularly Scottish sounding, looking into the guy and realising, lo and behold, he's not Scottish, he's English, and just a wave of disgust and anger coming over at Ian Blackford. That's my imagination running away with me a little bit there, but it's not too far-fetched to assume that something similar happened. Because Ian Blackford wasn't having any of this English photographer proudly displaying the beauty of Scotland on Twitter. Not on his watch, that's for sure. And by the way, this isn't just some righteous little new start trying to make some name for themselves in politics or try to be a good boy and report the bad boy to the headmaster. This guy is basically the headmaster. He's the leader of the Scottish National Party, the SNP, in Westminster. So it's the second most powerful elected official in Scotland. And he decides that when he sees this photograph, he's going to send the guy a message, not in private. No, he's just going to publicly put a message on with his official MP's Twitter account 
with his blue check mark and his 100,000 followers, and it says, as you live in the south of England and travel to Scotland is only for permitted reasons, I am sure there will be a valid reason as to why you are posting a photo from the north of Scotland last night. So not only has he directly called out this gentleman for having the absolute nerve to be English whilst posting a photograph of Scotland, and basically accused him of being a lawbreaker and putting people's lives at risk, but he's being sarcastic with it as well, so I don't know if you can get any less likeable. There's a time and a place for sarcasm, and when you're a powerful politician, it's never really right to be sarcastic. Now, as far as I know, Ian Blackford is not, and he never will be, a protected class in Scotland. However, he is a member of the government, so I'll still have to tread a little bit carefully, because, you know, it's Scotland. If they hear my accent, the investigation will begin immediately. So I'm not going to give it both barrels. But I do think that this is a complete overreach. It's an abuse of power by someone who appears to be quite comfortable abusing their power when they think they can get away with it. And it's a complete waste of any government official's time at any point. And yes, it's sinister. Now, I don't think saying that will get me into trouble, but for the purposes of educating any Scottish government official who may be listening, I am, of course, only the narrator of these videos. So don't waste our money trying to come after me because there's no law against narration in Scotland. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get back to Mr. Blackford's attempts at shaming an Englishman for posting a photograph in Scotland. So it turns out that this guy, Ollie Taylor, had every right to be in Scotland. He lives in Scotland. He moved here a couple of months ago, as he's entitled to do. Scotland is his permanent residence. Now, Mr. Taylor said himself, he said that he's moved from Dorset to Holkirk on the 23rd of October, which was before the restrictions changed and people were still able to come into Scotland without a, a valid reason. Although I think moving house is probably a valid reason anyway. Now, Ollie Taylor, the photographer, he didn't like what happened to him, but I'm assuming he knew he'd be arrested if... He said anything too fruity. I presume that he will have watched my video on the guy who got arrested for emailing swear words to Nicola Sturgeon after being prevented going to a family member's funeral. So on the basis that he most likely saw my video, he kept his language under control. Slightly curt, but under control, which was very wise. He said he would have expected to have maybe been contacted privately first to potentially double check whether he was allowed to be in Scotland. And he also said that it's unprofessional and damaging, which I completely agree with. But the thing that gets me, which he didn't seem to pick up on, I don't think anywhere really has picked up on it, is how did Ian Blackford know so much about this guy? How did Ian Blackford actually know that he lived in England? Did Ian Blackford know the guy? And if so, way to stab somebody in the back that you know, just trying to get them into trouble, try to drag them across the coals on Twitter and let the Twitter mob do their thing to them. And if Ian Blackford didn't know this guy, what did he do? Just put his name into Google and then find out where he lived? It just seems ridiculous. Now, this story was picked up by multiple media outlets, so good on them for that. It was picked up by The Scotsman, which is a newspaper here. I don't know anything about The Scotsman's political alliances or anything like that. Not that it really matters. Your political alliance doesn't matter in, in cases like this. But certainly, they do seem to be softballing him a little bit with this article. It says, Ian Blackford's error of judgment over photographer provides a lesson he should not forget. And then the byline says, Whether we are consciously aware of it or not, we all have our own theory of knowledge. The means by which we establish what is true, false, or somewhere in the grey area between the two. So, what they're actually doing there, that newspaper, which I believe is quite loyal to the Scottish National Party, what they're doing is telling the 59-year-old leader of the Scottish government's Westminster group how to engage his own critical thinking skills. They're actually telling him how to think. Now, just imagine actually having to explain how to think to somebody. I mean, yes, you do kind of need to work out if what you're saying in public, in your role as an elected official, when it may be harming another person, as your statement was exactly designed to do, you kind of have to figure out if what you're saying is factual. If you don't know the process by which to sort out the thoughts in your head in order to figure out whether something's factual, 
before saying it to your 100,000 followers, you're probably a complete idiot. And it kind of makes me want to run for office if the bar is so low, because that sounds like a really nice and cushy job. And I like how they call it an error of judgement as well, that's just a very polite way of saying fuck up. They should just call it what it is. Ian Blackford's fuck up over photographer provides a lesson he should not forget. Or powerful politician's failed power trip. That would also work. I will cut him some slack, he did apologise though. And I will accept an apology. Uh, I go by the Scott Adams field of thinking regarding this. He basically says you give people 48 hours to change their mind or restate what they what they meant and leave it there. And it's a good way to go ahead in public discourse. I don't know if Ian Blackford apologised within 48 hours or not, but he has apologised and I will accept an apology. Not that it's for me to accept his apology. And apology notwithstanding, he could still have broken the law. The Daily Mail actually reached out to a guy called Campbell Dean, who's the head of media law at BKF Solicitors in Glasgow. Now Campbell Dean actually sounds like a farmer solicitors in itself, so this guy is perfectly named to be a solicitor. But let's hear it from someone who knows the law. So Mr Dean said of Ian Blackford's tweet, he said, He is clearly questioning Mr Taylor's actions with an innuendo of wrongdoing. One only needs to consider the public opprobrium aimed at Dominic Cummings to see how much the public can be offended by breaching the rules. The tweet would be capable of being defamatory in law, notwithstanding Mr Blackford's entirely appropriate apology. So yes, he apologised, he deleted his tweet. Probably quite embarrassing, but it does show the power of public outrage when it comes to politicians. If the public had been right behind Ian Blackford, he wouldn't have apologised, he wouldn't have deleted his tweet. So it, it does show the power of public outrage when it comes to politicians. It's the only real way to keep them in check. It's kind of like a live by the tweet, die by the tweet kind of situation. So he took it down, he apologised. I suppose that's all we can hope for when someone screws up, but this kind of thing is still dangerous. It's a slide into some kind of society that I don't like. I don't think we've ever had a society where politicians pry into the private lives of people in such a way. You know, these people are monitoring our social media posts just in their free time, it seems, and that's probably during working hours when they're getting paid by the taxpayer. And I just don't think they should be allowed to reach into a private citizen's life in this way and probably cause them a lot of anxiety as well. When you're calling somebody out like that in public, who's completely innocent and done absolutely nothing wrong, you don't know the kind of damage you could actually do to that person's well-being. The way I see it is, if the politician hasn't been asked to look into a certain thing, then leave it alone. Don't just look and decide to take action yourself. This is what the police in Scotland do as well. The police are often acting as the complainers in cases in Scotland and it causes big problems between the trust level that is seen between the people and the police. If it's not something that they've been given the job to look into, leave it alone. And that goes for police and politicians. They just need to stop themselves trying to control everyone. And we the people need to speak out when we see it. The only good thing about this story is that that photo got a lot more eyes on it and presumably Ollie Taylor got a lot more recognition, which is well deserved, because it is a beautiful photograph. Anyway folks, that is just my own position on the matter. You can put your position in the comments, of course. Uh, remember to smash that like button, folks. YouTube loves that, and it feels good as well. If you notice when you smash the like button, you get a tiny little hit of endorphins. And endorphins were actually discovered in Scotland as well, which you may not have known. It's true, look it up. So if you do hit the like button, you get a little squirt of a Scottish discovery coursing through you. So really good stuff. Try it now, it's good. Anyway, we'll leave it there, folks. Once again, thank you very much for tuning in. I'm sure I'll have another video at some point coming up, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, folks.